You might think it's a bad idea to go fishing 30 miles offshore in the middle of the winter with snow and ice on the ground. And you'd be right, but sometimes the urge to fish is so strong that you can't help but round up the boys in 20 degree weather and send it without looking back. Because the only thing worse than shivering in the cold while covered in fish guts is sitting on the couch wishing that you'd gone fishing. Yeah, we're on, we're on. Dude, I'm getting dumped. What in the world? Holy oh, shit. You gotta hurry, dude. Oh, yeah. Nice. That one's enormous. In today's video, we'll be fishing with both new and familiar faces. And of course, we'll enjoy the fruits of our hard earned labor. So kick back and enjoy the ride. What is up guys, welcome back to another video. We are back doing some more Pollock fishing. Today we're actually supposed to be meeting up with Matt Hefner from On The Water. Um, and Albert's gonna be joining us, so it's gonna be a four man boat today. Um, but it is bright and early, it's about three o'clock in the morning. As you can see, we just had a big snow uh, yesterday and the day before. And overnight it actually froze, so, you know, my car is nice and icy. So it's gonna be a nice frigid morning. I got a lot of layers on, it's real cold, but we're gonna have a good time. We're gonna hopefully get some fish. What up, what up? What's up? It is cold. I can't feel my fingers, dude. And I have these negative 15 Celsius gloves. They're gonna come in clutch today. Now we're gonna head to Cam's, and uh, yeah, it's gonna be about an hour. So I'll see you guys in a bit. Been forwarded He's to an answer. No answer from He's Cam. <laughs> Thanks. Whoa, 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 what happened? Long night? No, I just knocked. Knocked? Word. Never said no lamb. Alright, well, we're outside whenever you're ready. Alright. <laughs> oh. <laughs> nice. Nice. His eyes weren't even open when he opened the door. Yeah. Is this the five rig? Yeah. I need clothing. Alright, let's grab these tuna rods first. I'm going to put one rod there. I'm going to put one there. Alright. You. No alarm. Rough start. Rough start. It's cold out. Cam, it doesn't matter how you start, it's about how you finish. That's that's true. Albert. Apologies to Matt Hafner in advance if he gets there before us. If Matt's probably there. Did you text him? Yeah. Bro, text him right now. Yeah, so it is cold this morning. I mean, when I woke up, it was like 21 degrees, so boat's still covered with ice and snow. We are now refueling at the gas station. Many places I'd rather be right now. You have to shuffle off the boat to go fishing. Don't go fishing. What? Why the shorts, though? After refueling the boat, truck, and refueling ourselves, we made the drive through Boston morning traffic and arrived at our destination. And waiting there for us was our special guest. All right, guys, well, we made it to the boat launch, and this is Matt Hefner of uh, On The Water. What's going on? Yeah, so uh, I work with uh, our content team. We have, like, I'm in the editorial department, but I work with all the guys that work on the video department, and uh, we're all kind of content creators in our own way. So some of us, you know, do the long form videos. I do a lot more of the short form kind of stuff. Um, I do the striper migration updates in the spring. So I've been doing those the past couple springs and it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun, man. I, I really enjoy like making the reels and getting out, you know, any day on the water is a good day, you know. Cool. And yeah, yeah so you, you probably recognize his voice, but I guess this is what he looks like. If you guys are <laughs> on the on the water social media page, those reels are, it's Matt here. It's the voice that you're hearing. Yes, sir. Water 
temp, 38 degrees. I've shoveled a lot of driveways before. I've never thought I would shovel the bad <laughs> After getting set up, we made the 30 mile run to the spot. And there was already a boat there catching fish, which was a very promising sign. <laughs> Did you guys get in any or no? We were getting them, but as soon as we ain't get up, we couldn't get them. Huh. All right guys, so we uh, made it to the spot and uh, we're gonna drop down and see what we, what we can get. We're marking something on the bottom. Not quite sure what it is yet. Definitely not as thick as they were the other day. So we're fishing in roughly 230 feet of water here, and the name of the game is jigging. The lure I drop down weighs about a pound or so, but even a jig that heavy takes a lot of time to get to the bottom. Above the jig is another hook, so I could potentially catch two fish in a single drop. Once I feel the lure hit bottom, I reel up a couple cranks, and then I just dangle my jig and teaser at that depth until I feel a thump, and it did not take long. Yeah, we're on, we're on. Yeah, we're on him. Now, bringing in a fish from 230 feet can take a while, so in an effort to not bore you, I'm gonna skip ahead to when the fish comes to the surface. We got, that's a good one. Oh yeah, first rush on the board and he's kind of a stud. Oh yeah. That's a nice one. That's a stud. All right guys, first Pollock on the board. This is a nice one, hopefully one of many. We're gonna get him on ice, which in this case is just throwing him on the deck. A little background on the fish I just caught. This is an Atlantic Pollock. They're prevalent all over the North Atlantic and just like cod and haddock, they're a mild tasting ground fish that's amazing for frying, like fish and chips, fish tacos, or a fried fish sandwich. But because it's such a mild tasting fish, they're used in anything from imitation crab and sushi to fish balls. So there's a pretty good chance you've eaten it. Sweet, thanks Put them on the deck. Yeah. You mean on ice, this is our ice yeah, box. Yeah. Oh, 200 feet of a lot of things. Oh, yeah. On the jig. There it is. Oh, he oh, pops. Oh, you're killing me. Is he floating right there? No, he went down. Really? Yeah, he's... I see him. He's going down. Nice. Breakfast sandwich on the tackle box is crazy. <laughs> oh man. I was expecting something. Yeah, we're on, we're on. There you go. Oh yeah, I think I got a double. That looks like it. I'm That's a good dumped. bend there. I'm getting dumped. <laughs> I'm getting dumped. <laughs> oh boy. Dumped by some Pollock. Dumped by some filet fishes Yeah. I think Dude, I'm getting dumped. What in the world? I'm gonna take a couple action shots while you guys are all picked up. Can you hit Mark on the BS? Yes. Mark, Mark, Mark. There we go. Oh, yeah. Two studs. That's what was going on. Oh yeah, nice that one. one's that's enormous. A stud, that's a hog. That could be the biggest one for both trips. Yeah, that's enormous. Holy smokes. All right guys, this is a stud pollock that we caught. Uh, it took us a, a minute to start marking them, but now it seems to be marking them thick and we're bringing them kind of, kind of inconsistently. So um, yeah, we're gonna throw this guy in the box. <laughs> Hopefully there's even bigger ones in this trip to come. And uh, yeah, we're gonna keep whacking them. Two. Nice. Look at that. Good old Boston bluefish, as they call them. Although we're nowhere near Boston. Beautiful fish, man. All right, Albert. What are the thoughts on Pollock so far? 
they freaking go hard dude i just got I'm, i've been fishing the light rod with just one jig and on my arm is toast yeah and i've maybe caught like three yeah they kind of torque you right yeah so i'm just gonna upgrade go a little heavier but now i got three hooks on this setup so there's potential for a triple if you get tripled you're gonna feel it i'm gonna cry Tri triples take like 10 minutes <laughs> you'll heal you'll you'll uh hear me wailing so the other day we were catching so many fish we were in pain i got some bruises in my in my groin area my back was breaking my arms were sore and i went home and i was like why don't we just use the tuna rods so we got three or four teasers on this right now with a big old jig and dropped it down reeling up three four fish at a time and uh yeah we'll see uh i don't know how many we got on here now but i know it's a lot easier than reeling up just one on the uh on the regular set of three fishing with the other day so and you're feeling good right i'm feeling great back's not hurting back's not hurting i got i got a little cold going on sounding a little nasally but other than that i'm feeling great we're killing some fish so all right let's see. not as good as the other day but uh they're certainly here all right well let's see how many you bring in uh, on this what, what are we going to call this rig the meat, the, the meat machine <laughs> i i like albert's name the meat machine the meat machine let's see how many pollock you bring in on this one drop it's not even breaking a sweat he's yawning <laughs> hey he's tired even oh that's a triple Oh, did we lose one? No, we got him. The big one on the jig. Oh, yeah. Not a bad little triple. And then meat machine goes back in just like that all right so we're gonna try to use this meat machine because kim has a second one at the bow so i'm gonna give it a shot see if uh see if this thing works clearly it does but we'll see if i can operate it all right so we got this big fat jig here i'm gonna throw it on this uh tuna rod see just about how many pollock we can bring in all right we're gonna clip this jig on so we got this jig and one two, three, four teasers. We're gonna drop this guy all the way to the bottom. See what's up. Yeah, we're tight. We are tight. may seem like a funny time to do this, but code T2P20 gets you 20% off on Grundens, baby. <laughs> Dude, I wouldn't know what to do without my Grundens. I know, if we did not have Grundens right now, we'd be wet and unhappy boys. Yep. <laughs> Guys, I think we have four. Four? <laughs> yeah, I think I got four. That's one. Got a quad. That's two. I got it. That's three. I got five, guys. <laughs> I have five. All right. That's four. And that is five. We got it, guys. One of the better ones of the day. I don't, but my coworkers gonna be are super into that. Great table fish. Like in your filet fish. Fish, fish yeah. buying process right now is flawed. And uh, what's wrong with the fish buying process? Touches too many hands. Takes weeks for you to get your fish. You know, and everybody's got to make a buck. You know, I don't think any one person is getting screwed, but you know, it's just not profitable for anybody. So, you know, buy direct from your local fishmonger. You know, get fresh fish day of and you know support your local fishermen 
this spring and summer, maybe even this winter, if we get things going, um, you can buy uh, fish directly from Cam. All you gotta do is text the number on the screen right now, te text capital F-I-S-H, and you'll be automatically added to a, uh, a list. And I can basically notify you whenever we go out, whenever we have a day like this, and we'll have daily catch, um, and we'll basically send out a text message letting you know where we'll be, uh, what fish is available, and you can buy directly from Cam. And I guarantee you the price and the freshness will be better than anything you can get in the store. Like Cam said, I mean, when you buy fish from the store, by the time it gets to the grocery store display counter, it's a beautifully pieced out filet, and it's probably changed hands at least three times minimum in order to get there. Um, not to mention every person along that process, anywhere from the distributor to the person who's actually filleting the fish to the people who are working at their grocery store, they gotta get paid too. So you're paying a premium, but you're not paying a premium for a good product. You're paying a premium for a fish that stays up to a week old. So buy directly from Cam, save money, get a better product. It's just that simple. But we're gonna keep whacking them. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll be in and out of here before lunchtime. But for now, Cheeto break. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Albert's on the uh, meat machine. Let it go. Dude, it's automatic right now. Yeah, this is wild. Boom. I did? Yeah, look. Oh, we're on. Oh, God. Oh, God. Heavy? Yeah. I think I just picked up something big. that rod tip. I think I got a shark, dude. Look at that. Oh, that's a tuna rod going, doubling over. You might just have five Mondos, dude. I think dude. I have five Mondos. Yeah, there's some big ones down there right now. <laughs> Putting the 80 wide. Those are studs. Yeah. Oh, I just opened. Oh, oh, one of them might have a, might have had a lamprey. It's okay. Uh, yep, I got a shark. Nope. I don't. I got five. Mongers. Albert might have the biggest one. That's that's a giant. Yeah, five of them. Five longers. <laughs> Holy shit. Shark, shark, dude. You gotta hurry, dude. Wow, riddled with lampreys that first one. That's the biggest it's a one. Stud. Yeah, absolutely. It's a stud. Get him in first, untangle later. Boss it. Albert probably with the biggest pollock of the trip. Big one. Nice. How did that one feel? You felt like it was I a shark. I thought it was right? a shark, man. <laughs> we had five of them on. The meat machine. That's a good one. In the box. Like, guys, it's like up to me with my height. Nice. What a jumbo. Someone mind grabbing a picture for me? Yeah, I got this hog. Holy smokes, this thing's alien. Yeah, that's gross. It's like an eel. Look at his teeth. Oh. This is a cool photo. This is gonna be on the weekly report. Oh yeah. That's a fing hog that one. <laughs> Look at that thing. Yeah, it may not have happened on Cape, but that's going in the report. That's a Massachusetts report. Yeah, yeah, I'll send some to uh, Ron Powers. He writes that one. I, that's my favorite, honestly. What's that? So Massachusetts. Oh, yeah? I feel like it has a lot more diversity. It does. There's so much more fishing out of the, yeah. the state of Mass than just the Cape, you know? Yeah. Like, At least, you, especially you around. The North Shore, Boston, yeah. Plymouth, and then all of Western Mass. Yeah. And Westport. Yep. And during like during the height of the season, it's fine because like there's so much to, there's so much fishing around Cape between like Vineyard and Nantucket Sound, Cape Cod Bay, Buzzards Bay. November in April. Yeah. Trout. Yeah. Exactly. 
white purse. That's all I'm doing these days. So this was a nice change of pace. Hey, you might need to look up to it. I need you to like, try and lift it so I can get to this plug. Lift it? Mm -hmm. Okay, let me get up before you write that down because it's going to come pouring out. Ready? Yeah. Heads up, blood coming your way. All right guys, so while the rest of the guys keep fishing, I'm gonna start cleaning the first batch of fish. The reason for that is because um, Pollock are ground fish and the guts actually, they can spoil the meat pretty quickly. So I'm actually gonna clean them while they keep fishing, just so we can be a little bit more efficient with our time. So we don't have to wait till the very end and we have to clean like 200 plus fish. And we're going right under the throat and go all the way through until you hit the spine. There should be a nice spurt of blood. It's a good sign. These fish are essentially bled as you're cleaning them. Then you go straight through, go all the way to the vent. Don't go too deep, otherwise you're gonna cut out all the guts and then you can just pull all of this out in one go. This one actually had egg sacs. You can just pull all those guts out and that's it. We're pretty much clean. Final step, give this fish a quick dunk. And this fish is clean. I cleaned easily over a hundred fish throughout the trip to the point where the big cooler vat was filled to the brim and all three totes were also filled with clean fish. And that was when we knew we needed to go home. Drive around out of it. Yeah, sure. You want to drive the boat, right? Alright, so we got this vat of fish filled to the brim. We got that tote right there. A couple donkeys over here, and then we got the other vat. Or we got the other tote in the back. Alright guys, this is our victory pose for the day. Probably yep. the six bigger ones that we found. And that's the size of my leg. Yeah. So now we're gonna make the uh, the boat run back to shore. Yep. And uh, send everybody home with Pollock. More than enough to give to their friends and family. So it's gonna be a, a fun time. Look at me all bundled up, and this guy's got no hat on, dude. Like, what's the fault? He's a menace without hat. <laughs> what are your thoughts on on Pollock? Uh, I had a great time. I think Pollock are a lot of fun. Although, like I said, I said to these guys earlier, they totally spoiled me on my first time Pollock fishing. This was like, I wouldn't say it was lock and load from the first drop, but man, we got some really solid fish in the boat, probably like 15 pounds or so maybe. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah so a lot of fish like that size, not very many small fish, um, which, you know, makes you wonder about stocks and stuff, but that's a whole other conversation. But man, killer day. Um, Pollock are a new uh, new favorite ground fish of mine. Those head shakes when you first hook up with them are a blast. Hard workout. Next time I would have stretched, especially because it's cold. Um, oh yeah. But definitely a lot of fun, you know, pulling fish that size up from 200 feet. After we got back to shore, we divvied up the fish and sent Matt home with some fillets. And you better believe I saved that rack, because even the best fillet job still has so much meat left on it. And my personal favorite thing to do with any fish rack is to make grilled collars. But we'll have to save that recipe for another day, because Albert's mom was very excited to receive fish and show us a recipe. So we pulled the boat out of the water, said our goodbyes, and I made my way to Albert's house. Come on in. What is up? Let's cook What's some fish. Good? What's going on? My mom's already sous chefed everything, so she's cut up all the ingredients. All she's got to do is just throw it in. Oh, it's like a cooking show. It's like a cooking show, exactly. 
she's been inspired from a WeChat video. Which, <laughs> really? Yeah, and she's video? followed the the, uh, the recipe for it. So mm -hmm. the first step of a Chinese household is you need to have some yeah, household I slippers. Have some slippers. Is it even an Asian household if you don't have slippers? You need slippers. Mandatory. They don't even need a fit. They're either too small or they're too big. Stand but you have to standard have issue. Yeah. Standard issue. Standard yeah. issue. Yeah, 就是这个用三片姜片等会要拍用餐然后姜丝然后这是这个马油 Straight in. Yeah, five minutes to the minute. Five minute timer. There it is. See you guys in five minutes. Just like that. So the 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 now, in this type of situation, we would just set it. Yeah. These are now fully cooked, but they just have no flavor other than salt. So, We got soy sauce going on. Yeah, soy sauce. And also, I get oil. Oyster sauce going on. Yeah. And also, I get mayo. Sesame. Sesame oil. Sesame oil. Dumping out the extra fluid. Yeah, we are to say. This is some you, some you try to say. Sauce going back on. Yeah. Now we say, some you have fun, that's it. <笑>一块两块你一块要不一块你把这香菜上去你这一块可以了 
smells incredible. Oh, it's very good. Yeah, sure. Bound to be good. Alrighty. Some fresh steamed pollock. Look at that. The sauce on there is just like. This is the third time I've done it. I've done it once. The first time is too much. A little bit of cilantro you could do with green onion too. Yeah, for cilantro, I'll add more onion. Depends on who you ask. Wow, it's so flaky. I can't even like pick it up with the fork. Yummy. Mm -hmm. mm. No fishiness at all. Just flaky, flaky white meat. That's good. That's good. It's very, very flaky, very soft. No fishiness whatsoever. All right, I'm gonna go in. From this side. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Get a little bit of everything in there. It smells incredible. Try this recipe, it's incredible. Staked Pollock, you don't even need to fillet it. Amazing. Fla beautifully flaky meat. Strong, strong flavors to complement the um, mild fish. And super easy. Total cook time was what? Seven minutes. Seven minutes. All you gotta do is stake your fish. And that's pretty much all the preparation you gotta do. Obviously, the ginger and the garlic, but everything else was just the sauce. Like this over rice, forget about it. Forget about it. Mm. Yummy. Very good. Very good. Okay. Thank you. Shout out to my mom for chefing it up. Shout out to Mama Chang. Unfortunately, did not want to be on camera. No camera shy, but. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you like what you see, consider subscribing for more content like this. The YouTube algorithm also thinks you might like these two videos, so feel free to check them out. Or not. It's a bacon, bacon, cheese, I'm in English. Oh, f*** it up. Almost, almost as bad as about f***.